Hello everyone, that manga kid here to give my full series review of A Tropical Fish Yearns for Snow by Makoto Hagino. This is a nine volume series released by Viz in their regular trim size, like Shonen Jump size format. Um, this series has taken me for an emotional ride, not because of the story itself really, but just originally um, my, every, a lot of people, maybe everybody, I don't know, myself included, um, was under the impression that this was a girls love series. I don't know, maybe because of this cover and the fact that Viz was promoting it and uh, alongside the other kind of LGBT titles that they were releasing or had previously released at the time, like That Blue Sky Feeling and After Hours um, and uh, Sweet Blue Flowers and that sort of thing. So I, as well as many other people, because I remember many people also calling this a girl's love title, were under the impression that this was in fact a girl's love title. Uh, and it wasn't until, I don't know, like volume six or seven or something when um, I think the creator or it, like there was an interview or something, I don't know. Anyway, at some point it became clear that this was not in fact a girl's love title and was just a story about female friendship, uh, which is fine, except I don't think I would have bought it um, if, if I had known that. Um, because I was really enjoying some of those titles that Viz was releasing that were just like, you know, really sweet um, gay titles. And so this one was one I purchased for that reason. Um, and I did enjoy the first few volumes, probably up to volume five, I think. Volume six and seven, I did not like. Um, I thought that it was too dramatic for what was actually happening. Um, the story is about Konatsu, the lighter haired girl, moves to a small town. Um, and of course is, you know, feeling out of place and she's in a new place. She doesn't know anybody. She's, you know, upset that she had to move, whatever. Um, I think her dad got a new job or something. I, the story we've seen a million times. She meets Koyuki, who is, I believe, a year older than her. Um, I don't think she's two years older. I think she's just a year older. Uh, and she runs the aquarium club. And there are lots of beautiful creatures in this aquarium club because they live by the sea. Um, they're a coastal town. And so they do have like a tortoise and, and a salamander and beautiful fish and all this stuff. Um, and Koyuki is very shy and very much just kind of the, the animals in the aquarium club. Those are her friends. Uh, so the two of them meet, they become friends pretty quickly and they clearly have kind of a special connection with each other and feel really, really strongly about each other. Um, and uh, so it's just kind of about their friendship. There's another girl who we see on this cover here who's, I believe, Konatsu's age um, and in her class or something. She's also there. There's a couple other girls, but for the most part, it's about these two and then this, this, this other girl um, who's on, I guess, two covers, three covers. Uh, and their kind of friendship, I guess. Um, the story is a bit confusing, honestly, because there's no, like, actual conflict, yet for some reason, the characters stop speaking to each other for, like, almost two volumes. It's odd. Like, it's, the conflict 
is that they can't communicate. But it's not as if one of them said something that upset the other person. It's just that literally the, char- the main character doesn't know how to speak to Koyuki, and Koyuki doesn't know how to speak to Konatsu. And so they just decide to like stop talking. But then it's eating each other up inside, and it's like, just say hello. Say good morning. Like it, it was such a non-conflict that for some reason was so overly dramatic that I just couldn't wrap my head around it. Um, because, like, this isn't a girl's love story. So if it was, the conflict might be that they don't, they don't know how to say their feelings for each other, and then one of them maybe confesses, and the other one's uncomfortable. That's not what. That's not what ha- what happened. What happened was they just don't know how to talk to each other and for some reason got weirdly shy and and awkward around each other like months and months and months into their friendship. It made very little sense to me why that happened and why it went on so long and why we spent two whole volumes in Konatsu's head being like, I want to talk to her. I don't know how to talk to her. I don't know if she wants to talk to me. I'm like, what is what it what is happening? So you could argue that a little bit of the conflict is the fact that Koyuki is older and she's gonna graduate soon. But like, if that's the case, go be with your friend while she's still here. Like, why are we whining about it? This is not a person you've known your entire life. This is someone you met like five months ago. It, it just, I don't understand. I don't understand. The saving grace of this manga is that the fish and the salamander and the turtle is very cute. There's, the, the animals are adorable. The covers are beautiful. I love the, the blue motif. Uh, you know, the character designs are, are you know, they're fine. Um, they're, they're very pretty characters, but I can find pretty characters in most of the manga on my shelves. Um, I don't like to be overly negative when I do reviews of things, particularly series that I've gone to the trouble of buying the whole thing and reading it. But this one really, really irritated me um, because I loved the first like five volumes so much. And then as soon as this like weird non-conflict started happening, I was and I was buying this as it was coming out until volume eight, because I just stopped like after volume seven, I went, I don't want to read this anymore. Uh, and it wasn't until recently a couple months ago that I finally, there was a really good sale on and I went, whatever, I'm just going to buy the final two volumes um, and finally finish this series. But yeah, it just, it was making me mad. And I don't get mad very easily because when I read manga, I'm reading it because I'm enjoying it. And typically I will put something down if I'm not enjoying it. But like for some reason, this one, I'm like, I, I need to finish it and feel justified that that I did finish it. Um and I wanted to see a resolution to these characters that I actually did like at the beginning. So I think that's, you know, part of my gripe with it is that it's not a girl's love series like it was originally kind of marketed to feel like it was going to be. But also um, that, like, they were just in an argument for, for like two volumes that just didn't need to be happening. If it just wanted to be a cute story about friendship, I don't understand why it needed that that whole arc. Um, it, to me, it was a waste. It was just a waste. This could have been seven volumes long, and you could have just cut out that whole conflict that, that just was non-existent. Um, because if it's just a cute slice-of-life coming-of-age story about this girl who moves to a small town and meets another pretty girl who, who runs an aquarium club, I'm cool with that. Just make it that. I don't need anything more than that. Um, but I don't like I don't like drama for the sake of drama. And in this case, there was literally no drama. It just was weird angst that was overdone and and underexplained. Um, that being said, I mean, honestly, I don't think I can recommend this unless you really, 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 really love fish. Um, and salamanders and stuff. Uh, or you really, really want a story about high school girls becoming friends. It, you know, whatever. 
Um, but to me, this doesn't offer anything special that I haven't read so many times. And I have so many other series on my shelf that, that do female friendship better. If I want to read a story about female friendship, I'm going to go read Kimi ni Todoke because that's an excellent story. Um, you know, like I don't need, I don't need this in particular and I would recommend so many other things before I recommend this to somebody. Um, but like I said, if you want to just look at really adorable little animals, sure, pick this up. Um, but to me, there is not so much in this that is redeeming, uh, to make it worth buying nine volumes. Um, yeah, it's just not, I think that I will probably reread the first like five volumes again. Um, but I don't know that I'll be able to make it through the whole thing, but who knows? I don't like my tastes change as the years go on. And maybe when volume six and seven came out, I was really irritated about other things in my life. And I just projected onto this manga. Uh, that's entirely possible. Who knows? Um, so years down the line, if I pick this up again, uh, maybe I'll get through the whole thing and go like, wow, I actually really enjoyed that. But at this point, um, I did not really enjoy this entire read. Um, the ending was good. It was fine. Um, but like I said, you just take out those couple volumes and this would be a great story. Uh, or at least a passable, reasonable high school story. Um, that being said, if you have read this, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. If you liked it, like by all means, tell me I'm wrong. Let me know what it is, what it is about this story that you really, really enjoy. Um, I love small town stories. I love the coastal sort of towns. I, I find them to be very charming stories. I just um, felt like we were kind of promised something that didn't follow through uh, when this was originally being released. And then also just, I don't know, I found it to be poorly written in, in quite a few aspects, uh, which was disappointing to me personally. Um, but that's my opinion. If you really love this, that's great for you. Glad we have it in English for you. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I would like to hear your thoughts on this story if you've read it, because um, I clearly had a difficult time with it. Um, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching.